Thank you. When I come Chennai. Thank you. For many years, I have followed my passion. I have uh, followed my passion in many, way, in many different ways. I love to build robots. I do robots. Yet I remember a number of years ago, about 30 years ago, when I graduated from college, I had all these dreams, and it's the day after when I'm sitting down, drinking a coffee, opening up the newspaper, realizing that I'm totally unemployed, that I start looking for a company. And I'm looking for a company where I can do this, where I can build machines, where I can build robots, where I can do all that stuff. And I find it. So I'm walking there the first day of my job. And as I walk through, I see all these robots on one side, machines on the other. And I just feel completely like if I was a child in a candy store. Completely. I just felt Picasso. I'm Picasso. I'm going to be able to do what I want. I'm going to be able to design what I want. So I get there. I go up to my desk, sit down, and I feel completely like an engineer. Completely. I feel proud. I am an engineer. And I go up to my boss, and I start talking to him. And he greets me, and he gives me the greetings. And then he starts telling me, I am very happy you're here. I am very happy. We need your expertise. So let's get on to it. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to build a machine. So I want you to build a machine. And as he starts describing it, my knees began to do this started shaking. My smile froze. My mind went blank. And all I could think about is, wait, I did not see that in school. Where are the equations? Where are the formulas? Where are the squiggly things? And I literally felt like a child. In one instant, I was reduced to a child, from an engineer to a child. Well, 30 years have gone by. And History repeats itself. I work with outstanding students, students that do a great job, that work very hard. They learn, they pass our tests, and they go off to work, and the first day of school, the same story repeats themselves. It took me two to three years to be able to design and build my first robot. It takes graduates today two to three years to be able to do the same. Companies all over the world invest two to three years and $25,000 to $50,000 to put graduates up to speed. It is a very high investment if you consider all the engineers here in Chennai, all the students worldwide that graduate. It is a very high investment. So my question is what needs to change? What do we as universities have to do different? And we are doing many things right. Universities are very good at teaching knowledge. We teach knowledge, and we are very good at it. Recently, over the years, we've learned to develop skills. We use things like cases. We use things like problem-based learning, like project-based learning. We even have our students work in industry while they study, so they develop dexterity. But something is still missing. And I believe what is missing is we do not teach understanding. And understanding what al is what allows you to take what you know and apply it in a different field, apply it in a different state. It is what it allows a student to remember the formulas and the equations and use it to build the cars, to build the devices, to build the machines, to do the accounting, to do the buildings. That understanding is really what takes two to three years and twenty-five dollars to $50,000 investment. So universities, we have to start thinking about developing four things, not only three. Understanding, knowledge, skills, and dexterity. Now let me tell you how we teach at universities. This is how we normally teach a class called pneumatics. And since I know all of you here love engineering, I will teach you pneumatics. So the first thing I would do is draw a square, a rectangle, right there. Then I would put a horizontal T, then I would put an arrow looking up, an arrow looking down, and then my favorite part, I would put a squiggly formula. And all semester long, you and I will play hide and seek. I will hide the F and you find it. I will hide the A and try to trick you and you find it. 
And then I will, finally, I will hide the squiggly symbol called Rho, and you will find it. And it's a whole semester that we play this game, and you become very good, and you get very good grades. You get very good grades in my class with that. And then two years later, you go off into industry, and they tell you, okay, I want you to do that, to use that, to automatically open the door of a car. Or I want you to use that to hold something so a robot can, or I want you to hold that, I mean use that so that you can lift a car. Huh? Well, my, <laughs> huh? Well, that's exactly how I felt. There is a different way we can teach, and I call it context-based learning. And context-based learning has to do with expanding your reality, with expanding what you already know, with expanding and creating an awareness of what you know. For example, if I wanted to teach you pneumatics, I would give you a straw. So I would simply give you a straw. And I don't know how many of you have played with it, and kids do not do this at home. But I would probably put a little piece of paper, and you and I would start playing. So if I could ask for a volunteer, somebody that will come up with me, Anybody? Excellent. So, please give a round of, a round of applause. Mr. Dakar, thank you. So, I will give you a straw, and I see you already have one. So, you already have little pieces of paper. So, you're going to, so I want you to shoot me with that. Excellent. Good job. Now it's my turn. Now, for all of you that are wondering why he has the straw and I have a big stick, there is a very reasonable scientific explanation. I am the speaker. <laughs> so now it is my turn. Ready? <laughs> Give a round of applause, please. So with this very simple experiment, you have learned three things. One, with air, we can move things. With air, we are able to move things. Number two, if it hits you, it hurts. <laughs> and that is called F. That is called force. And the third thing, let me ask you this. If somebody hits you as you're playing, and you want to hit them harder, what do you do? Everyone? You blow harder. You have just learned what the squiggly symbol rho means. It means blow harder. So look at this. In very few minutes, you have learned what it takes me a semester to teach my students. You are very smart. <laughs> so now, what can we do with this? Imagine that on this dart, I actually put a little stick to the side. So it is a dart with a little stick. And I put it in here, and when I blow the air through here, the stick will actually come out. Now, if I blow the air through here, the stick will actually come back in. So now I have something that causes motion. It causes a little stick to go out and come in. So now I have a question for you. How would you use that to open the door of a bus? Can you imagine it? Using a little stick that comes out with air to close and open the door of a bus. Now imagine this. Imagine you're in a roller coaster ride. You are sitting down. And for safety, they lower a harness. Well, I want you all to visualize and imagine how using this same device, you could actually bring it down. Can you actually do it? Yes. So in a few minutes, by expanding your awareness and your understanding of very simple phenomena, we have taught you. And now you and I can talk about F. And now you and I can talk about models. And now you and I can talk about Rho. And now you and I can play hide and seek if we want. But you have learned through understanding. Now, why does this work? It has to do with the way our brain works. Our brain is not good for learning recipes and names and numbers. Our Brain works in a different way. It's a very efficient machine, but what it likes to do, it likes to put everything together. And that's how it brings everything. So imagine this. Imagine that in my hand, I have a lemon or a lime, 
and I have a knife, and I'm slicing the lemon to make lemonade. And here it is, the juices are flowing. Now I want you to be aware of your mouth. How many of you are starting to water salivate? Raise your hands, yes? Clap if you do. Now what happened? All I said was lemon, knife, lime. What happened? Your brain brought back such information that it not only remembered the word, it remembered what it meant to you, and it caused your body to change. So if you and I can harness that in education, if you and I can use that same principle in education, we can teach people to graduate and do what they're really their passion to do. And that is what it's about. So we tested this out. We tested expanding reality, and we did this with kids. We developed a program at Tecnologico Monterrey, my university, called No Limits. And first year, college students, as soon as they enter, they can enroll into this program volunteer. And if they don't want to enroll, they don't have to. All we do is we look at them like this, stare at them. But it's a volunteer program, and actually students teach students. This is very important. Two students teach students, and students organize this whole thing. And we have had more than 1,000 students go through this program. And they meet every week for 15 weeks. They meet for five hours. And we use context-based learning to show them and teach them complex things. Electronics, programming of a little microcontroller, mechanical engineering. And at the end, they're all there, they're all volunteer, they do not get a grade. And at the end, they start building, we give them a challenge. And the first challenge we gave them was to design a robot that was able to climb stairs by itself. Regular steps, stairs. So they go in there, and these are first year students, without us teaching them how to do this, go in there and do it, and finally they develop robots and machines that can actually go upstairs. They have different creative, they have a creative mind of their own, and they do it in different, different ways. And some of them, and I repeat, these are first year students. We did not teach them how to make those parts. We did not teach them how to build it. They had the thirst to do that. They went off and did it. They learned through understanding. Now, what results? We found a lot of results. Suddenly we had an increase of activity in our students. One of our students actually was invited by NASA in his second summer to lead the design of a project, of a project, of a robot, to explore the ice cap in Greenland. Guillermo Diaz is his name. Another one of our students, Adar Villa, created a company while he was still in his second semester or in his fourth semester. He created a company and he was named Young Entrepreneur of the Year by a very prestigious magazine. Another one of our students in his first summer, after taking No Limits, decided to make a machine for his father's company that processes coffee beans. And he designed and built his first machine that cuts or takes away, peels away the cover off the shell. Now we did that, we said, can we actually do it with younger kids? How, how young can we go? And we repeated context-based learning and uh, Johns Hopkins University has a fabulous program that inspires and brings in young talent, high school students. And we created a course at Tecnologico Monterrey with John Hopkins that uses context-based learning and we taught them the same things. And the students, the first thing is we took them to real robots and they applied and they programmed and they learned how to do it. But we also gave them the same challenge. Now, all of these robots actually climbed those stairs. Now, what's amazing to me is two things. One, we did not teach them mechanics. They figured it out. They figured how the bending and the spring back helped them. We did not teach them how the ratios of gears, which we normally teach in advanced courses, we taught them just put the gears, do the gears, test the gears, try the gears. We use context-based learning the same as a straw. But most amazing for me is they learned how to do this in three weeks. So context-based learning is an opportunity you and I have as educators and as students to change the way we learn. And the whole idea is very simple. Concentrate first on understanding. If you are able to understand, you are able to add the meaning, the words, the models. And this is not only for engineering. It applies to architecture. It applies to medicine. It applies to anything we want. 
Now, learning is not linear. We cannot teach math the first semester and then expect them to be able to do complex things in their ninth. It is iterative. We need for them to experience it on and on. And it does not matter if the robots reach the heights or not. What matters is that they gain an experience. Because when they go into an advanced course, they will not see squiggly things on the board. They will understand why their robot fell or why it pushed or why it worked. They will understand why a building falls or why a building is strong enough to support. They will understand finances. They will understand business. So you and I can make a change by simply expanding their reality. Thank you very much.